Due to popular demand from social media, Shane McMahon was once again in charge of Monday Night Raw. A very unlikely tag team took on the League of Nations in the main event, and a new tag team tournament sponsored by Bootios kicked off. And just why was Dr. Phil at Monday Night Raw? Get ready, guys and gals, because it's time for WGS TV Reviews. Monday Night Raw. Hey, YouTube, are you ready for your hot tag? Because if you aren't, it's definitely time to work. Hey, this is Purple Haze, and you're watching WGS TV. Greetings, YouTube. You have worked your way back into another episode of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer. I am the Russell Gamer. Don't be only Boo Joe. This is going to be the Monday Night Raw review for the week of April 11, 2016. Let me go ahead and introduce my co reviewer this week for the Monday Night Raw review, ladies and gentlemen. You know him as the Bay Area MVP, known as Will. Will, what's up? Uh, I'm glad that Shane's finally hosting Raw, and this was a good Raw, Billy. Let, let's do it. Well, with that being said, guys and gals, let's go ahead and get the review started. Shane McMahon opened up Monday Night Raw and thanked the crowd last week, and well, thanked the crowd for last week and bringing him back by popular demand on social media. You could really tell Shane was really fighting back the feels in his promo that was really cut short abruptly by Kevin Owens, who was demanding his rematch for the Intercontinental Championship in traditional Sh uh, McMahon fashion. Shane agreed to it if he won his number one contendership match that he was put in against the Swiss Superman Cesaro. But like I said, well, you could tell he was really fighting back those feels when he was cutting his promo. You could tell by his voice he was getting choked up. Yes, I, I mean, we can go all night talking about how Shane's emotions was since WrestleMania, but we don't have time for that here. But yeah, I mean, for those who were paying attention to the screen, it was very, very much like he's at home. And basically, he got what you would say the acknowledgement he's supposed to get, <laughs> uh, unlike his sister Stephanie McMahon, but <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Sh Shay went to the door this one. I'm very impressed. One thing I have to say is I like Cesaro's new ring entrance. He's kind of like a Swiss secret agent in a sense. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, if you guys would have paid attention to the Titantron that was in the back when Cesaro was walking out, it was the famous. 007 gun barrel uh, intro that you've seen for many many years if you guys are fans of James Bond then you would know what I'm talking about but besides all that this was an opening match for Monday Night Raw I've always said it it takes two to have a really great match and both Owens and Cesaro were just that really great and one thing I want to say is I love how JBL referred to Owens' frog splash as a bullfrog splash which really could be considered a good signature move name for it and should actually be put in Kevin Owens Kevin Owens's move set. However, the finish was Cesaro hitting the neutralizer on Owens as Cesaro is now the new number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship. Now well he and Miz have had some good matches in the past, so I'm actually looking forward to what they do with them for the Intercontinental title. And for those who are keeping score, this is the Miz Cesaro 3 because they had two other matches back a couple years back. And yes, I mean, when you put this much build between a champion and Maurice, uh, we'll save that for another note, <laughs> and you got someone that needed that push. You need someone that can get with the crowd could make the belt me worth something. And I'm going to say here on WGS TV, Billy, you're going to be my witness. When they give Cesaro the shot, he's going to take the belt from Miz. But overall, this match was... The match will be decent. But as far as Owens, Bullfrog? Bullfrog? Okay, I'll take a look at that. <laughs> Dr. Phil was the advertised guest for Raw this week. Why? I don't know. He didn't actually promote anything at all. It, they actually used him in several storyline spots last night. The first one being backstage with Ric Flair and Charlotte. 
um, Dr. Phil, I believe, tried to play up on Charlotte being a true champion that ne didn't need to cheat, and the segment ended with Dr. Phil having a wooing contest with Ric Flair. I don't know why either, Will. I'm sorry, I, I need some potato chips for this, folks, so I apologize, but I'm sorry. This is where Charlotte needs to stand on her own. I respect the fact that she turns to her father, the nature boy, Ric Flair, but you gotta learn to be on your own sometimes. Now, as far as that Dr. Phil segment, weren't we talking about this hours before we had the review and... <laughs> Did WWE just have to give him something? Is, 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 is this some neurological thing that we're not sensing here? I, I mean, does he have any even business guest hosting? I'm not going to bring back the special guest host thing. I, I just hope not. Like I said, to this day, I still ha to this moment, I still have no idea why Dr. Phil was an advertised guest. It's not like he's a big draw or anything. And Dr. Phil really doesn't hit that key demographic that WWE goes for. You know, Dr. Phil has a completely other uh, demographic in a different age range, so we're just going to leave it at that. As we learned in the opening uh, segment of Monday Night Raw this week, Shane McMahon put together a tag team tournament with the winners getting a shot at the tag team titles. And I love how the New Day came out and said that this tournament was sponsored by Bootios. Now, when it comes to the opening match in the tag team tournament, it's very uncertain to say what exactly happened with Kalisto in the opening match which was the Dudleys taking on the Lucha Dragons. The spot was Kalisto being thrown to the outside and took a very hard bump on the outside, which followed up with Devon clotheslining uh, Kalisto. After that, he was kept out of the match with medical staff checking him out for the duration of the match. Now, the finish was the Dudleys getting the 3D unseen car to pick up the win and advance in the tag team tur tournament. And for the second week in a row, we see Enzo Amore in big cast, Colin Cassidy, having some words for the former 24-time tag team champions. What I take from this, Will, the main thing that I what I take from this, I want to see Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy versus the Dudley Boys in the finals of the tournament. And for the second week in a row, what we have here is a legendary tag team that are, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, aren't they 23 time world tag team champions? I think we have to throw in a couple of the IW. But in that event, yes. I'm, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> didn't they count one of the IWGP titles uh, that they had in TNA as a, another one? Yeah, I believe another day. But yeah, I mean, you have the most popular NXT tag team coming on last night and basically wanting a chance at a legendary tag team. Yeah, I want them to make an appearance. Even though I'm still sad they haven't got the NXT tag titles during their time at NXT, but I hope they advance in the new days tournament because they have a lot to offer. So I'm looking forward to this. I really am. You know what, Will? I'm going to steal a line from you when it comes to Roman Reigns. He's now getting John Cena heat. Just for him being the spot that he's in and use the exact same line of him not being the bad guy or a good guy. He was the guy. Look for that on future Roman Reigns merchandise to come from WWE. I guarantee it. The League of Nations will come out and much to my confusion would come to the ring to beat down Reigns when the Wyatt family of all people would make the save for Reigns which would lead to Shane McMahon making a tag team main event for Raw with two members of the League of Nations taking on the team of Reigns and Wyatt. Well, I guess Shane graduated from the Teddy Long University majoring in tag team matchmaking. And see. And Shane is a smart businessman. And what did Shane do along these lines? Was make something that the fans wouldn't guess well and happy. You and I were shocked. I think I mostly was. For him to make this match 
what I'm still mm. shocked is, and we'll probably never hear the end of it, but hopefully, why did the White family help Roman? Most of us were still wondering why, so we, we can confirm that the Wyatt and Roman are basically, t <laughs> or how you say, bullseye targeted by the League of Nations, but that didn't last that much until then, but Shane, like I'm going to keep saying it, brilliant, brilliant business on Shane's part. Shane has impressed. That he has. That he has. The WWE Women's Championship was on the line, and Charlotte defended the title. Defended the title against Natalya. Now, why was Doctor Phil there? He said on camera that he wanted to see if Charlotte would step up and be a true champion, and night sheet or something to that degree. But there's something else I would like to mention. It was actually recognized on commentary by Michael Cole, JBL, and Byron Saxton that Brie Bellows WrestleMania match was her retirement match. So I guess it's now official. And I would like to take this time to wish Bree and Daniel Bryan the best of luck in everything that they do. Now, on to the match. Women's wrestling has definitely seen an improvement as of late, which is something I've been wanting to see in WWE for quite some time. Charlotte and Natalya worked a great match for the title and capped it off with a great controversial finish. Natalya had Charlotte in the sharpshooter when Ric Flair pulled the referee out of the ring while Charlotte was tapping out. Referee would disqualify Charlotte, giving Natalya the win, but kept the title on Charlotte. And, Will, my question to you is, do you see any credence or, or any value into a Charlotte versus Natalya storyline over the WWE Women's title? And this is going to the next pay-per-view, and... I don't know if I ever said this on WGS TV in any of your reviews, but I don't mind repeating it again. Charlotte has to step more on the bright side of things and not lean on her dad. Now for Natalia, I'm going to take a quote from our good friend James from the Big Easy here. You can only get as good as what you'll get from Natalia. Very hard working diva comes from a legendary family. I'm surprised they didn't give Natalia much as a shot throughout the years after she had one back in 2010. I remember that match. But I think this build will do greatly. So I'm going to jump on board with you, Billy, and say this Charlotte, Natalia, title on the line, whatever pay per view's coming up next. Natalia should win it. I think it's been long overdue for her for Natalia. The second opening round match of the tag team tournament saw the Usos defeating Curtis Axel and Heath Slater, but the real talking point of this segment right now is the debut of the Bullet Club. That's right, guys and gals. Machine Gun Carl Anderson and Luke, aka Doc Gallows, have officially made their debut on WWE and destroyed the Usos, which would lead me to believe that they will be working with the Usos for their initial storyline. There were a lot of definite chance for the Bullet Club as they left the ringside area, but Will, my question to you, now will WWE use Bullet Club, Bulletproof, Balor Club, or any variation of that name? Now, I'm gonna take this small brief time to let everybody know Bullet Club is trademarked by New Japan Pro Wrestling, so unless WWE and New Japan uh, make out a deal, it will not be Bullet Club in WWE, but knowing Vince McMahon, who knows? But I would rather see Balor Club, because remember, Finn Balor, when he was Prince Debit, is the owner and founder of the Bullet Club in New Japan, for those who don't know. So, I would think Balor Club or Bulletproof would work. Now, as far as the finisher goes, for those who don't know that finisher, it's called the Magic Killer. It's a double team finisher. For If you don't know the ability, it's called the Magic Killer. And I would like the storyline to have something because we know Luke Gallows has already been in WWE. This is Carl Anderson's first time in a WWE ring. I hope they don't mess this up. I really hope they don't. Well, let's word it like this. It it's his first time in a WWE ring, but it's not his first time in a wrestling ring. So I, I got some faith in Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows and 
you know, with the success they've had over in New Japan Pro Wrestling, I, I really want to see them transition that success into WWE, and they definitely have an opportunity. And speaking of that, Sami Zayn had a second chance at another opportunity this week to get into the WWE World of Weight Championship match if he could defeat AJ Styles. Owens, after he complained about how he got screwed over at WrestleMania and earlier in the night, uh, and threatened to take out Zayn again, got himself thrown out by Shane McMahon, so there was no chance of that happening. Now, when you look at it, on paper, Sami Zayn versus AJ Styles is a dream match for the IWC, and it did not disappoint, to say the least. Zayn's and Styles showed great chemistry in and out of the ring, which made for a great match, but it was Styles hitting the phenomenal forearm on Zayn to pick up the win, and to say the least, Will, they made this match exciting from move to move. What would you expect from two very good international talents such as Sami Zayn and AJ Styles? This was basically one of the matches I watched the whole thing. I did not move from my chair. I watched that whole match. It was a great match. And for AJ Styles now being the true number one contender it's gonna prove that he's gonna give Roman a run for his money with the match for Zayn he'll get his opportunity down the line but and then did you see the handshake at the end of the segment when Shane came out that said that was a good match between you two did you hear the crowd again Shane doing good work how owners should do it so yes, I will give this match more than five stars. I mean, you gotta admit, this match was worth watching. Oh, definitely. Like I said before, a dream match from the IWC, because I know a lot of people out there, including yours truly, for a long time have been wanting to see an AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn or El Generico match for quite some time. So I'm glad WWE actually went through with it and they had a great match on Raw. Chris Jericho was up next with the highlight reel with what he promised to be a very special guest, which ended up being Chris Jericho himself. Didn't I say before Y2J was much better creatively as a heel? It's proven it right here. Now, with Jericho interrupting um, Ambrose's win on SmackDown led me to, to speculate on whether or not they were starting a storyline with Ambrose and Jericho, and from what they did on Raw with turning the highlight reel into the Ambrose Asylum really confirmed it for me. Ambrose even had his own clip on time, which kind of reminded me of the angle. Now, I'm going to be taking everybody back here, so just think back and try to remember, because I know my wrestling stuff. It reminded me of the angle where Linda and Stephanie McMahon gave Stone Cold Steve Austin 50% control of the WWE and came out in his usual attire, but with a necktie. After Jericho had some words for the lunatic fringe, they capped off the Ambrose Asylum with Ambrose hitting Dirty D's on Jericho. Well, I have to say, I'm really looking forward to what they do with, with two top-tier talents in Jericho and Ambrose. <laughs> oh, of course. I mean, I could think of many things on why Jericho was pissed. But, you know, you were, I agree. Jericho was built better as a heel. It was his claim to fame. Now, given the fact that Ambrose made fun of Jericho's $750 scarf, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, he said on live TV, the scarf looked like it's 30 bucks in your mind, but it was $750. So, um, okay, Jericho, but the thing is, I'm looking forward to the build. Sadly, I did not watch that SmackDown where Jericho interrupted. I must have been in the restroom. But I'm looking forward to this build. I, I, I want to see what this has to offer as much as anybody else does. Adam Rose dropped out to Paulo Cruz. Need I say more? And I'm going to go ahead and let you take a breather on this one, folks. What Shane's seen in Apollo Cruz is what you're going to see in its all calling card worldwide. This guy will not disappoint. Already hit the spin up powerbomb on Tyler Breeze last week. Today, I forgot his nickname, Adam Rose's nickname, the Radical Mongoose, whatever. That's it. That's it. Yeah, uh, Popcorn Billy, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> I really don't know what else to say about that one. 
But uh, Goldust was backstage and found out at the last second that R-Truth entered the Golden Truth into the tag team tournament and ended the segment with Dr. Phil. Kind of like me shaking my head and wondering, what did I just watch? I'm sorry. Thought, I, I, I'm sorry, that was for the delay. Again, what we just talked about. Why was Dr. Phil on the show? He didn't even get not 30 seconds in. He took a look at Truth. He took a look at Gota, shook his head, uh, walked away. They both looked at each other. Next page, please. <laughs> The main event of Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt taking on the League of Nations in Sheamus and Alberto Del Rio had the potential to be a great tag team match, but for me, for some reason, it felt a little lackluster. Now, I don't know if it has anything to do with the monstrous size heat Reigns is getting from the IWC, but it definitely played a part in it. Would you believe that Bray Wyatt got the biggest pop from the crowd in that match? Especially when he hit Sister Abigail on Del Rio for the finish, and there was a smattering of boos when Reigns hit the spear on Sheamus to prevent the pin breakup. Now, with the stare down that happened after the match between Reigns and Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family, it does beg the question, Will, of whether or not they will work another storyline with Reigns and Wyatt. And see, we can go back to last year at Extreme Rules to where they had a big build against each other. And there was no belts on the line, so sorry, folks. <laughs> but you can say here is what we talked about earlier: is are they willing to make the Wyatt family face? Are they willing to do this? Cause I think the Wyatt family should have had a face turn time ago, but I don't know. And then what bothered me was when Wyatt hit Sister Abigail on Del Rio when. And it was so perfectly timed too. When he he did the Bullet Club's uh, gun sign at Sheamus, you think Ro Roman speared him, which, like you said, those boos. Are they looking forward to another con another uh, build? I don't think so because a face turn should happen. Um, and shout out to Luke Harper. You know you're injured. Get well soon. Uh, but I don't think uh, Wyatt's gonna have another chance for the title against. Roman with AJ first in line, but maybe somewhere down the line after SummerSlam, perhaps, but just not now. I'm just concerned about the face turn of what WD Creative is going to do for Bray. I'm really concerned. Luke Harper, widely considered to be the shining star out of the Wyatt family, but not Bray Wyatt is showing some showing some promise as of late. Overall score for Raw this week gets a 3.75 out of 5 with best match of the night. Definitely going to AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn with Cesaro versus Kevin Owens. A very, very close second to it. And honestly, the worst match of the night, I'm sorry, it has to go to the main event because it fell completely short of what it could have been. It had the potential to be a show stealer and it just felt like it should have opened Monday Night Raw not main evented it, but that's just my opinion. Let's go over to Will and get his overall score and his picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week. Alright, folks. I'm going to give this one a 3.5. The best match. I'm on board. AJ versus Sammy on this one. Close second is basically that match that you just said. This close second one, Cesaro. Versus Kevin, Kevin Owens and Cesaro. Owens. It, Cesaro, Cesaro versus the referee, whatever. <laughs> Worst <laughs> match, I, I agree with the main event. I feel that there was a strange build. I'm trying to wonder what Shane was thinking there, but at least Shane has better thoughts than Vince does when it comes to this. And I will give the worst segment... No, no. We're going to we're gonna take two on this one. All the worst segments go to Dr. Phil on each three. He still has no business on Raw. I'm sorry. I still Best can't believe that he had a wooing contest with Ric Flair on national TV. Yes. Best segment, and I don't say this very much, but I would like to say thank you, New Day, for being who you are and doing this tournament. Because Shane pulled it a Teddy Long. So I'm looking forward to his tag team division being more properly used and well known and one way to watch the Smackdown too so look out for Smackdown we got more qualifying matches 
Well, guys and gals, that's been our thoughts on Monday Night Raw. What we want to know from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Monday Night Raw this week. What are your overall scores? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw? Do you agree with our picks? Do you agree with our opinions? Or do you have a different opinion about with, uh, with how Monday Night Raw played out? We definitely want to hear what you guys out there have to say because now the floor is yours, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure you put your comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. WGS TV is on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you guys can ask me questions. Links will be provided in the description box below. And as always, guys and gals, I'll have a couple of videos in the annotations at the end of this video for you guys to check out as well. So for the Bay Area MVP known as well, I'm the Russell Gamer. Double people in Goudreau, and I will see you at the next Warp Zone. Bye, guys. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Where's Freddy? Freddy's right there. Come on, Bonnie. Just go the fuck already. Oh, shit. Ooh. Ooh.